So open um, to the page on Arclay, and we're going to go back and see if you remember the formula for when we were doing it uh, in the rectangular coordinate system. Remember for that, it means y was some function of x, and we already did in, I think, our first chapter, maybe our second one. We talked about how you get the length of an arc if it's graph, like maybe it's a piece of a parabola, and how you actually get that curved length. Called it L, and let's see if you guys remember what you do to get it. I think I had one on the last test. Yep. One plus two i plus three x. There we go. Almost the integral. Thank you. Yep. And then with respect to x and from a to b, from that one we're going to derive the parametric version. So if I can, if you can derive it, you can usually avoid having to memorize it. If you already have this one down, which I think, didn't I have one of these on your last test? Yes, yeah, I kind of keep that stuff. You need to memorize it, then kind of pop them in every now and then. So when you do the parametric version, remember that's when x is given as some function of t or theta, and y is also given as some other function of t or theta. The formula comes from this one up here, so it's pretty straightforward. You're still going to do what Avery said, you're still going to integrate you are still going to have that one there for now. But in parametric, we just got done taking parametric derivatives. So we do do one plus the derivative squared, but dy dx is what in parametric? dy dt, oh yeah, so we're gonna write that as dy dt squared over dx dt squared. It's all under the root, and that dx is still out here. When I clean this up, it'll kind of uh, morph itself into the actual formula you would get if you were to Google parametric arc length. So whenever we have um, the sum of fractions, we're going to do what we've been doing forever, crisscross, multiply across. So when I clean this up up here, I have dx dt quantity squared from the crisp, right, plus dy dt, and that would be quantity squared. So that's crisscross, and then on our multiply across, it would be over dx dt quantity squared. It's looking a little uglier, but it's going to clean up in just a second. And then our dx is over there. So do you see on the bottom, I could actually pop off the squaring, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just so I don't have to rewrite it. Let's shorten our root a little bit and take that off because the square would undo the squaring. And then when we divide, don't we multiply by a reciprocal? Yes? So I'm going to actually also, just to avoid me writing to pick up some of the time I lost rebooting my computer, I'm going to cross this off. And instead of dividing by dx dt, I'm going to multiply by dt dx off on the other side. Because it pops out from under the root, because it was squared under there. And then division, and we multiply by the reciprocal, and do you see those canceling? So if you were to go down and look at the formula in the box down here, it says to get parametric arc length, which we, I always call L, this is the formula for it. I want you underneath this, though, because there should be an easier way to memorize this in here. You know how we need the total distance traveled in our regular um just particle motion, what would we integrate to get the total distance traveled? Do you remember? Absolute, absolute value of the velocity, correct? And what's another word for the absolute value of velocity? Speed. Yeah, this right here next week is actually the formula for the speed of the particle, that little piece right there. So it actually is going to, I told you that this parametric movement ties in a ton to the particle motion that we have. You are still actually, in both cases, integrating the speed. You just don't know why it was the speed up until next week. So this is a little bit ahead of its time, but for test studying purposes, I would put that on there. It helps you um, remember the formula. So what I'm going to do here is, um, you guys should have some blank paper, correct? I don't know why I have that on there. We are going to just do where, all right, so in geometry, what do they tell you the circumference of a circle is? But why is it 2 pi r? No, we're not on that one yet. So you're right, the circumference is 2 pi r, basically because somebody told you, correct? But 
But isn't it the distance around the circle? And isn't it technically arc length? And isn't the circle of parameterized curve? Yeah, so watch. But we're only going to do, go ahead and draw yourself a circle. And when we have our circle that has a radius of r, correct? And then this is x and that's y. And they're determined by this theta. This is all from pre-calculus, correct? That's a theta at this point. Uh, so we're not going to use t for the angle. I'm going to use theta just because it's the angle that's causing the x's and y's to change. Wouldn't you agree that cosine of your angle is adjacent over hypotenuse? Right? That's true, correct? So wouldn't x be r cosine theta? Did you ever ask in pre-calc, well, why is the x cosine? This is why. Because on the unit circle, what's r? 1, right? So that's why x is actually defined as the cosine of the angle. I could do the same thing for the sine and say it's opposite over hypotenuse. And my y value is r sine theta. So these are the parametric equations for the, yep, go ahead, for a circle with radius r. And according to what I told you, we should be able to figure out this arc length. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So let's go 0 to pi over 2, and then I'm going to multiply it by 4. So I'm going to use my new formula to actually derive the formula for the circumference of the circle, which is kind of cool, because up until now we were just told what it is, correct? So when I go in here and I do my formula, Remember what we need to do under there. We do dx, and this one would be d theta, so be careful. I'm going to go, it's actually theta. That's my variable of change, not dx dt. But, and then it'd be plus dy d theta quantity squared. So all you have to do is go take these derivatives. Um, sometimes this gets messy because half and all from under that root can be tricky, but this one works great. So when I do my dx d theta, what would I get? Go ahead, tell me. Negative r sine theta, correct? You can do that in your head. And then we are going to need to square it. So my dx d theta would be negative r sine theta, but I'm going to square it. So it would be r squared sine squared theta. I hope I didn't go, that's an easy derivative though. Likewise, what would the derivative of my y be as theta changes? r cosine, and I need to square it. So this would be r squared cosine squared theta. Now take a look at this. Tell me a way I'm going to be able to pop out from under that root, because that's actually the biggest challenge with these, which sometimes is nice because you get to leave your calculator sooner than usual a lot of the times. But how am I going to be able to pop out from under the root? There we go. I'm going to take out the r squared, right? That would be nice. And then what's left is really what? One. Exactly. So this one actually cleans itself up super nice. What is my integrand going to be? When I'm all done with that and I replace this with its one, what am I really just integrating? R, the square root of r squared. Yeah, so just r, but be careful because r is a radius, and for any circle, that's actually a number. Like, that's not your variable when it's common, right? Your variable is theta. So be careful you don't say it's r squared over 2. Like, if r was 5, correct? What's your antiderivative? 5t, theta, right? Like, it's kind of like if it was like this. If the radius was 5 and it was dx, you would say, well, the derivative antiderivative is 5x, correct? So in this guy, what's r's antiderivative when it's a constant? r theta. Yeah, and theta is your variable of change, and it went from 0 to pi over 2. So if you take a look at what happens then, when you put this guy in here, you'll get 4r, and then you get pi over 2, and so when you're done, you do get a 2 and a pi and an r left. You get the equation for the circumference of a circle with radius r. Does that make sense? All right, it seems like a super, I just put this in here, cancel. And then 
I guess I could subtract zero if you want me to, but I'm not really going to. It's cool. Yeah, we get to derive almost every formula you've ever had. It's kind of nice. We get to see where things come from. So, um, on that page, can you see it? Is there another one on the bottom of that? We're not on the juicy yet. It's coming. But, okay. So we are on the one where it says x equals cosine cubed. So I think I'm up a little bit. So here's our next one. I would give this one on a scale of one to five. I'm gonna give it a three and a half. It, it works out nicely if you don't make any big mistakes. So um, if you were to graph that in your parametric mode, it makes what's called a hypocycloid. It looks like this. So go ahead and just trust me. I'm trying to save some time. If you were to graph that in parametric mode, it's going to go up, make a sharp turn, sharp turn, sharp turn, sharp turn. Because of those sharp turns, I'm going to only work from here to here because we have issues at sharp corners, right? So instead of me going all the way around that hypocycloid, I'm going to do four times what I would get if I went from zero to pi half, just to be safe. Sometimes your calculator will integrate past sharp turns, but sometimes it will go. So we're going to just go like that. Let's see if you have the formula memorized. What goes under the root? dx dt squared dy dt squared. Yeah, so let's go. I like to do that off on the side because these get messy. So I'm going to do my dx dt. And then, so this is just chain and power rule from Calc 1. It'd be 3. Uh, cosine squared t, right, times negative sine. Watch my uh, mechanics. There's a lot of them today. but So that's the derivative of uh, x. My derivative of y, I'm going to do right beneath it here, would be 3 sine squared t cosine t. Are we good with that? Am I going too fast? That's kind of kind of this stuff you should be except for the formula nothing here is really particularly difficult yet so i'm supposed to square these i'm going to do it down here when i square this guy i would well, i'll do it in here i'd get nine cosine to the fourth it's looking messy but just wait it cleans up nice if i remember it from previous years when i do my dx dt squared i get a nine cosine to the fourth sine squared that looks good and then I'm running out of real estate. Let me move my book here. And then I'm going to square this guy. I'll get 9 sine to the fourth cosine squared t. Did I do that right? No. All right, perfect. So once I get it here, then it kind of becomes a mess unless you figure out a nice factoring, which this does. So either you factor and it looks good, or somehow you make it into some sort of perfect square, otherwise it's going to be calculator accurate because you're stuck under that root. So what can I factor out of all this? A 9, nine a cosine squared, and a sine squared. And look what's left that makes it so nice. I have a cosine squared plus a sine squared. DT, why is that so nice? The whole thing is nice. Why is it so nice? Yeah, so this guy right here is one. And what's left in here, guys, is nice as well because it's a perfect square. So this one I said is actually just like a three and a half because everything just sort of fell in my lap once I put it in the formula. So I'm going from zero to pi over two, and I would pop out a three and a cosine t and a sine t. Anything spare game with r theorem because it's got integration in it. So this one, which integration method are you going to choose? I would do a nice u sub. Yep. So you could actually let u be sine or cosine. Thank you. You can let u be sine or cosine. Why am I going to choose to let it be sine? Yeah, I don't want to work with negatives. I'm going to do a change of limits too because it would just be so easy. So I would be going from zero to sine of pi halves, which is one. So that's kind of nice, a uh, very nice limit change. What's my du? Cosine t, correct? So that's actually really nice. If I bring the three out front, I'm just gonna go draw an arrow. I've got a 12 and I'm integrating from zero to pi over two, right? Am I good? 
it so far. And then this is just u du. Zero to one. Zero to one. Yep. Sorry, I changed my letter because I didn't put it on there. Thank you for listening. Zero to one. And then I'll integrate with respect to u. So just a nice easy polynomial. So there's a lots of stuff going on in here. And y no plus c. This goes kind of the move along the way. It's a definite integral. You have to come off any subtraction. So it looks like I get a 6u squared. And then from 0 to 1, I get a nice answer. All that mess and the length of that curve, or the, I guess you call it the perimeter of the hypocycloid, sounds kind of weird, right, would be 6. That was fairly straightforward. I was just using the new formula. But now it's going to get messy, all right? So this is the one right here that will be, go ahead and write out time. This is not on the AP test. I would not have one on ours either. It's because of the amount of trig that's in it. And I don't know that you've memorized all your trig stuff. But what we're going to do is, I was going to go to the back board, but I have the record for the three people who are absent. So I think we're just going to stick with it up here. Um, I'm just going to go to another page. All right. So, you guys should go go to that other sheet of paper, and I even turn it sideways. It stretches very long. Yeah. You kind of know when we have to go to a separate sheet. It gets a little funky. So, you said this other time next? It'll be Tuesday. It's going to say BC extra credit or something like that. Yeah. So, if um, at some point it's too much for you, just nod and smile, but be quiet so other people can get it. This is not a you have to know. It's just a, yeah, it's kind of, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the back. Our x is defined as a function of t, so that triggers that this is parametric. Um, I would just rewrite it on your white sheet. And our y is a really similar one. It looks like it's 5 cosine of t minus... Cosine 5t. I already graphed it for you so you could see what it looks like. I'm going to go over here and do it again. It's got like a four leaf sort of clover thing going with it, like this and then like this and then like that. Um, I don't remember the name of it. What is it? Is it something with the black and with the hypocycloid? Is it epicycloid? Epicycloid. All right. So um, we're going to find its perimeter, but again, we have issues right here. Here at these sharp turns, but because of the symmetry, we're fine. So before we start, even we're going to be integrating four. We'll go from zero to pi over two, and then you're going to need a lot of real estate for what's going under this wheel. If you need to wipe that, <laughs> all right? It needs a ton. So on the top, what's the first thing I'm going to do with my x as a function of t? I'm going to take the derivative. Yeah, so I think I'll do that over, I'm going to do it underneath, to be honest, because it, it's, it gets so long. So I'm just going to go here, I'm going to draw an arrow, I'm going to do my dx dt first. Alright, and a nice easy one, it'll just be 5 cosine t, and then what's the derivative of the second piece of it? 5 cosine 5t, right? And then what am I supposed to do with it? All right, so go like this, just so you're not writing so much. I, there's a lot to write on this. I'm going to square that, which means I'm going to do this times itself. And it's going to get messy for a while. All right, so just to repeat, I'm doing my formula where I need to do dx dt squared, and so that's what I'm doing. And to do that, I actually need to foil it. It's just a very messy foil. So the first thing I'm going to have is a 25 cosine squared of t. My outside and my inside, I'm going to combine. I have minus 25 cosine t cosine 5t, and another minus 25 of the same thing. Would you agree? So, whoa! So, I have a minus 50. Again, I'm just doing the outside and the inside. Cosine t cosine 5t. Are you okay with that move right there? <laughs> That's my first, and then my outsides and my insides were both 25 cosine t, whatever. And then on my last, I'm going to have a plus 25, and I'll have a cosine squared, and I'll have a 5t, and I'm just going to let it sit for now. Alright? 
Next up, this is, we're not doing a whole lot of these. You can see why they're, they're quite long. What am I going to do next? dy, dt, and I'm going to square it as well. I'm not going under that root yet because I'm going to try to get it as clean as possible. I think I'll do my dy, dt in black as well. So I'd be a minus 5 sine of t. If I thought you could take these derivatives, I wouldn't be saying it all, but it's pretty straightforward. And then I'd have a plus because the derivative of cosine t is a t plus sine of t. All right, what am I going to do with my dy dt? Square it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it times itself just to save some writing. I don't have any windy errors though because I I squared it. All right, and then I'm going to go do that again in red, just so you can see it on the color code line. So again, when I square this, I mean, you might want to write yourself little notes if you're like, I'm going to try to get those five test points. At this point, I'm just squaring. It just looks way uglier than squaring from your algebra days. So on my first, I have a 25 sine squared. Not so bad. Outside and inside, <coughs> again, are going to be minus 25 of those and another minus 25 of those. So again, I have a minus 50 of 8. Oh, and I'm going to pause for a second. Let's repeat what we're doing. Okay. So I did dx dt, then I did it times itself by foiling. I did dy dt, and then now I'm doing it by itself by foiling. This is my first, outside insides, and I'm on my last, which would be a 25 what? Sine squared of what? There we go. If you're still with me, hang in there. Okay. So far, nothing's difficult, correct? It looks ancient, like don't show this to anybody who hasn't taken calculus here. It looks scary, but... Go back over here now. What am I supposed to do with these two things under that root? Add them, right? So I think what we should do, just to keep it, watch when I add them, what happens. Again, I'm adding the two red things. I would have 25 cosine squared plus 25 sine squared, correct? Wouldn't I have a 25 times, just for these first two, I'm adding vertically here to just try to keep it clean for you guys. I have a 25 times cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Why do I like that? That's going to be just a 1, and those, that big chunk ends up being really nice as 25. All right, you're nodding. I like that. These two do not go together, so I'm going to write them each using a minus 50 cosine t, cosine 5t, and right here, and another minus 50. Sine t, sine of five t, poof that. And then notice how I'm running out of room at the end here. All right, so just so you know what I did, I added these, but while I did, I factored out of 25. I think I factored out of 50, actually, I'll do that later. I've added those. Take a look, and just because I can't write it, but once I factor 25 out of these as well, would I get cosine squared of stuff plus sine squared of the same stuff, which is just gonna be what? One, right? So my tail end is this can be a 25 as well. For the same reason this front part is, I can't, that's why I told you to turn your paper sideways. You might want to write that out. That it's actually 25 times cosine squared 5t plus sine squared 5t. But, all right. So let's clean it up. I have the 25 from the front end, the 25 from the back end, correct? So I have 50 from those two. And then minus 50 cosine t cosine 5. Wow, you did not come on a good day when I wrote this down. Or the two. Maybe, yeah. It's not normally this ugly in days. Alright, so that's where I'm sitting. Alright, are we okay? Do you guys have any questions on what I did? Because I don't, I can't do a whole lot of them. Alright, and just to repeat, I took dx dt and multiplied by itself by foil. I took dy dt, foiled, and now I'm adding the two up because to do it under that root, do you see how long that would be if I stretched the whole thing out? So I'm doing it vertically. This here, I'm going to put in a box. That there is as good as my integrand gets for now. So I'm going to do a rewrite because now I'm ready to try to integrate that. I said I'm going to do four times from zero to pi halves. And again, why am I choosing that? Just because. Go 
don't want to do. Why am I doing four? And then integrating from zero to pi over two. Yeah, I'm only doing one of the first clovers on there because then we have a, a differentiability issue, which you can't integrate past. All right. I am my red. I now have a fifty minus. Now I'm thinking ahead here, and I'll show you why. Because you see up above where they gave you some um, fig identities in your note packet, right? And that you haven't used either one of those since pre-cal. Um, the bottom one of them's coming back pretty strong and polar, but. If you have, a, I'm going to just write it for a second. Go ahead, I'm factoring a 50 out of, this is where I think you might want to star what's going on right here. And let's write trig identity. This is why uh, we don't test, this is more pre-cal right now. So, 50 is 50. I'm taking a 50 out of here so I can have cosine t, cosine 5t, and then it'd actually be plus watch my signs right and then it'd be sine t now a couple of you are on math team right are any of you guys on the trig part all right somebody said yes so Greta the trig identity I'm going to use you probably used in math team I have one parenthesis short here that I will see all right there you go all right so underneath here I'm going to go in a different color I think I'll go blue for you and I whoa I'm going to use the trig identity that has in your notes that says that cosine of an angle plus or minus another angle is equal to. Have you used this one in? Yeah. Yes. So math team, do you do, Tristan, do you do trig for math team? Yeah. yeah. So this one should be, you should know it, correct? It's cosine, what? Alpha, cosine, the other angle, right? And then these two switch, if this is plus, this one's minus. And then do you remember what goes over here? Yep. Sine alpha sine the other one. Yeah, so it's cosine, cosine, plus or minus, sine, sine. That's a trig identity, and that's why we don't test you on this. If you forget this, then you're stuck. All right, but here's the deal. My alpha is a T. I'm going to put it underneath. That's my first angle. My second angle is a 5T. Correct? And if you look at it, mine is right here a plus. It was, I'm just going to rewrite it again. So this needs to be a 5t. This is actually my t. This is my 5t. Do you see how mine is a plus? Right on that side? That means it's going to be a minus on this one. So mine's actually going to be a cosine of t minus 5t. That's what it would clean up into. Okay, that's pre-calculus, but we haven't done forever. This is actually cosine of negative 4t. So now we have to talk about more pre-calculus. All right, you ready for it? Hey, LP, what's cosine of pi over 2? Oh, let's do pi over 6. That's funny. Let's do cosine pi over 2. What's cosine of pi over 2? What is it? What's cosine negative pi over 2? It's the same, correct? Pi over 4. 4, sorry. Pi over 4. That's why we're talking about straight up and down. All right. So look up here. Another thing from pre-cal is that cosine of an angle is the same as cosine of the negative angle because it's just, if they're both to the right. Does that make sense? So cosine of x degrees is the same as cosine of negative x degrees. So that allows me to take away the negative sign. All right, I'm going to go back here. So under that root, here's what I have. First of all, I have the 4 because we're doing four of those little clover leaves. We're going to just go a fourth of the way. I now have under my root, it's a 50, which is just fine, right? Minus 50. And then what was all the rest of that stuff? Cosine of what? Okay. Love it. All right. Now.
next step, what do you think I might want to do with that piece? Let's factor it out. Yeah, so let's go ahead and make it oops, from 0 to positive 2. Again, I'm just kind of winging this here, but I think I'm going to take that 50 out. And then I think I'm going to make it 1. There's my 50. Minus the cosine of 14. You good with that move right there? Did I do something wrong? No, I'm good. What do you think I can pull out? I heard Greta, you just said it in your head, but what am I going to be able to pull out of that? What am I going to pull out front of my radical? A five. So I'm just cleaning things up because it was getting really messy. And again, I don't know if there's a sort of way to do this. It's my first time doing it since last year, but I, I'm just kind of cleaning house as I go a little bit so it doesn't get too messy. So I pull, you might want to draw an arrow. Again, if I lost you, it's okay, because this is an extension day. Um, and then I have my two. That's going to be left under the root. And then I have my one minus cosine of 14. All right. It got better. Don't you agree? Yes? Right? It is better. Yes? All right. So, actually, I'm still under the root, though. So, yeah. It's sort of better. It's a little bit better. Okay. Now the thing that I'm struggling with right now is how do I integrate back? That's another trick I can do. So we're going to go back up here. Man, you're doing high level math today. You're doing what sophomores in college at the high level of math are doing. But under that root, I think I'm going to put the two back in just because I just don't want to have to deal with parentheses. All right, this is what I've got going. This guy right here, there's a trig identity that says that the cosine, I don't know if you have this one, you have to memorize all of them, you guys? There's a couple of them for cosine two theta. For this one, we're going to use the one minus sine, oh, it's actually one minus two Sine squared. Yep. So she's got that one down for math days. Nick, she's going to have you memorize all of those? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, but if you, the rest of you haven't done it since pre calc, so you're just going to kind of have to get it in your brain for one day. In this scenario, though, what's my angle? What's my angle? 2t, mm -hmm. correct? So my angle is actually 2t because there's cosine 14. It was double an angle, but my angle was 2t. So mine's going to be 1 minus 2, there's a 2 there, and then it would be sine squared of what? 2t. You good? Just going to let you repeat. This is the trig identity. This you need to just trust me and Greta. <laughs> right? uh, me because I know it and her because she's on math team that there's a double angle formula for cosine that allows you to pass off to, and you might say, well, how would I know to choose that one? When we're under roots, we want things squared. Does that make sense why? Right? We have no hope of popping out from under that root in case we can get stuff that's squared, which is why I chose this trig identity. All right, so I'm gonna go back up here. <laughs> one more rewrite. All right, here we go. It is the square root of, and then it's a two, and then it's minus a 2, and then I just replace that with 1 minus 2 sine squared and 2. This is good stuff. Is that your name? Trying. All right, so yeah, I'll pull points just so I'm not going too fast. But my trig identity turned my cosine 4t into this, and I just substituted it back in. Watch what happens. Are you ready? This 2 would be minus 2, correct, if I just did it, and then I have a plus, all right, are you ready? Just to be for real, actually I'm feeling really good about this, I was a little nervous for a while, because like I said, these are for me to do up here on the fly, <laughs> I'm like, just kind of like this and then this, but watch why I feel really good about it. I remember the answer from last year, it's a 40, in case you're saying you worry about it being a 40, because I don't have a point for the answer, right? 
But watch what's going to happen. The twos are going to cancel. I'm left with a four sine squared of 2t under my root. I want somebody to tell me why I like that. You might say, how'd you get that? I distributed and the twos cancel. I distributed there and I got a plus four. You might want to draw those in. Why do I love that in my integrand? I can, yeah, it's a perfect square. I can square root it. So I'm finally out. That's why arc length, you might say, this is super hard. It's usually really easy because you either just have to recognize the setup or you get to go to your calculator because they're too complicated in the algorithm. Does that make sense? So usually like on an AP exam, if you see an arc length question, you're going to go sweet. It's either calculator or equity and you're just going to type in the math nine. Or it's going to say which one of these represents. And so they actually are... They, they're either incredibly difficult like this one, or they're quite easy, because it can't be in between the two. All right? So what's going to pop out of here? Two. So I've got a 40 that'll come out, and then also in here, a sign of what? 2t. Perfect. Now, next step. How do I integrate sine of 2t? You said. Exactly. Who's you? All right. U equals two T. D U equals what? Two D T. Actually, I'm gonna leave that two in there. Do you mind? Where was I? I'm gonna go like this and leave the two in there because this is nicer. I'm gonna put the twenty here and the two right there. You get why I'm doing that? Right? Because now this is sine U D U. It's perfect. Correct? Yes. Yep, so now I have sine u du. So I'm actually integrating sine of u du. What didn't I do? Change my limits, those of you who are watching, so I'll do that right now. It'd go from zero to pi. Oh, I'm almost done. <laughs> What's the antiderivative of sine? I love it. This is, by the way, when you get to super advanced levels of math, this is generally how your work's gonna go. It'll go like this and like this and like this and then it's like and if it doesn't, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> they make diamonds. So I'm now kind of collapsing in. This is 20 cosine u from 0 to 5. Nope. Yes. Yep. Thank you. I would have gotten a negative 40 and have to go find my mistake. So I'm at negative 20. Cosine pi is negative 1. Cosine 0 is 1. Negative 20 times negative 2. 40. Love it. But. If you don't know how to do it, that's okay. <laughs> if you look at that. Oh, I love it. Exactly it's fun, point. right? Yeah. I think it's fun. But it's cool. Yeah, for real. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Alright, so you're excited. Are you guys ready? It's all of a sudden goes shh. And I'm going to record the assignment. So 18 and 19 on your worksheet are calculator accurate. So basically, you're going to be t taking the derivatives, sticking them under the rug, math 9 Um, Wait, it's not 18, 19. It's 15 and 16. Yeah, 15 and 16 are calculator active. 17 is great, but difficult. You might need to look at the key. And 18 is fine. 17 is almost at the level I just did, just without the trace, so it's a little easier. Make sure that that is. If you need the key for this one, it's understandable. Try not to use it, they'll challenge yourself. There's only four of them because yesterday's was long, but two short ones on your calculator you can probably do them right now. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. 